Okay. All right. Well, um, hello. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening from uh, wherever you are watching this broadcast with us today. Uh, we really do appreciate your attendance. We realize for some it is during your work day too. So thank you for taking the time to, you know, take the hour out or even if it's over your working lunch, you know, as obviously system engineers, we just have working lunches, not lunches. Um, so yeah, um, this is the third month of the uh, Vendor Spotlight program that we're doing here at MSP Geek. Obviously, you know, we're pleased to be joined here by uh, Domotes here for the month of March. Um, just to give a little insight real quick um, into what the Vendor Spotlight is, it's basically allowing, giving and allowing vendors a bit of a platform, you know, ones that actively contribute into your community, a chance to showcase a little bit of their knowledge, a little bit, you know, flex their muscles a little bit, talk technical with us engineers, right? It's not aimed at the sales folk. Um, obviously, if there are sales folk here, again, welcome uh, to you as well. Um, so with that, uh, you wanna hit the next slide here? We'll just do intros real quick. Sure. Um, so first off, uh, my name is Martin Keir. Uh, I am the MSP Geek founder and admin. I'm actually one of a team of admins. Um, so don't blame everything that's, you know, good on me but then at the same time you know we all you know we all pitch in and we all try and make this community the best it can be uh for you all out there that obviously use it and we obviously appreciate that um joined with us today we have uh with domotes we have giancarlo finelli he is the cto of domotes and we also have jb fowler who is the cpo um guys if you want to just quickly introduce yourselves i'm sure you'll do a much better job of doing that than i will thanks um, thanks Martin. Oh, thanks, Jimmy. Uh, yeah, and thanks for the introduction. Uh, yeah, it would be it, it is a pleasure for us to to go through this presentation today and some live demo on how to use SMP. Most of the things is challenging. Now you know it's, it's we will discuss about SNMP and the S in the SNMP world hmm. where it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll we'll make this simple uh, into this, which is good. Yeah. So my name is JB Fowler. Uh, you know, I, I focus a lot on the the product itself within Domotes and uh, do a lot of product management. But I also work closely with Giancarlo to help make sure that uh, you know what we have within Domotes meets the needs. And uh, frankly, I'm really really excited to talk about uh, SNMP today because it's one of one of the core things that we do and and we require. Really quite a bit of knowledge on that. So Giancarlo and his team of engineers uh, here at Domotes has has done a really good job making it, <laughs> as as you said, putting the S into simple network management protocol. So I look forward to talking about that today. Um, so just um, before we go into the agenda, just want to make everybody aware um, we have uh, JB here. Obviously, um, he's going to be keeping an eye on the chat and the QA in Zoom. Um, we also have Violet as well, who works for Domo. She will be actively watching the um, GeekCast and also the V Domo's channels in the Slack uh, team as well. So just wanted to throw that out there just in case, you know, cause I obviously know the chat will go as soon as we drop the uh, Zoom call, but obviously, you know, we can keep the chat going after the cast, you know, in the channel. I think JB, Giancarlo and even uh, Violet will be sticking around just for a little bit, you know, after the, after the webinar today. So. I will um, oh, okay. I'll go silent now for a little bit. And uh, Giancarlo, over to you. So thanks, Martin. Uh, so we will, we will discuss, as, as we were mentioning, what the uh, SNMP is and why it is important now. Uh, um, it is more and more relevant for MSPs, but also uh, other markets. Uh, we will uh, little discuss how it works, what are the protocol, what are the version of SNMP, but more importantly, what are the challenges in start monitoring through SNMP? And uh, we will uh, dive into some examples on printers, in uh, network devices and other devices there, how to read from SNMP. And then at the end, I will briefly introduce um, how a monitoring solution can work better with SNMP. Uh, what, 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 I mean, in, try, in terms of resolving the challenges that we will discuss about. So very quick uh, definition of, uh, of uh, SNMP, it's simple network uh, management protocol. Everybody laughs, you know, like, uh, uh, like JP was mentioning, you know, simple is really hard to say uh, for SNMP. We will try to make it simpler, but it's basically a, a protocol for collecting and organizing information out of uh, uh, network devices. So IP-based devices. Uh, it is it has been in place for years, I mean, uh, 
since the 80s it was the first version of SMP was implemented. So basically, what it does is any single device as, uh, that supports SNMP um, is able to provide information about their status on this protocol. And there is an SMP manager we will uh, we'll see later that collects this information and asks this information to every devices. Which device support SMP? Every IP connected device might support that. Router, modem, uh, um, switches, uh, a sensor, even temporary sensor, immediate sensor, printers, project, every, every, every type of devices. You can have your own implementation of SNMP on your own device. But why is SNMP important in today's network and why it is important to monitor uh, through SNMP? Because through SNMP, you can collect information out of devices when you don't have a specific, um, let's say, software on that device. Now, everybody here is familiar with the RMN and you're familiar with the agent that you install on a PC on, a, on a, an endpoint uh, to monitor that specific endpoint. It gives you all the information about that machine. Uh, CPU, hardware, user utilization, software, patches, everything on that machine. But if you have, let's say, a network switch, or if you have, a, a, I don't know, a security camera, if you have a printer and where you cannot install your, uh, your monitoring software, chances are that there is an SMP agent on that device that provides the information that you're looking for for that device. So you can monitor through SMP temperature out of sensor. You can monitor on a NAS drive, you can monitor the occupancy on the on the storage array. You on a printer, you can monitor the ink level of every single um, cartridge uh, and CPU usage uh, and uh, and memory usage and the resource usage in general on on um, servers and servers. In that case, there is an overlap with your RM, RMM, of course. But on top of that, on the network devices, you can collect traffic. You can collect information that can help you building a topology of a network and so on. One important thing about the SNMP, we will discuss about this, is that the protocol itself supports, let's say two type of main uh, methodology to get the data out of, this, of uh, the devices. The first methodology is the simplest one and we will see in the architecture very briefly. Uh, it's on, on top of polling, you know, you're polling information and the device tells you, okay, this is, I don't know, the status of the printer. But more importantly, all the SNMP agent, all the version of the SNMP support what, we, what is called trap. So there is a mechanism that allows the end device to notify the monitoring solution that there is something going on, something weird. So instead of polling, you, you make your monitoring solution aware that, oh, something is happening on this device, on this entity. So this is how the architecture works. We will see some uh, example through uh, uh, some tools that we use for browsing SNMP. So the mechanism is, as I said, there are, it's based on two kind of um, main type of, uh, uh, let's say, communication between the uh, entities in this uh, protocol, which is manager basically and the agents. There is also a concept of proxy where multiple agents can pass through a proxy to rely to the, to the, to the manager. So the first mechanism is the simplest one, the manager, which is the monitoring solution basically, ask for a certain information to the agent and there is a, a result uh, that is provided back to the, to the manager. And the other mechanism is based on trap. So this is the, the one where you can configure an SNMP agent to tell, okay, you know what, if for instance, the temperature of this switch goes above 70 Celsius degree, send me a trap message. So inform the, the SNMP manager that there is something going on. So there is an issue. Instead of continuously polling the temperature. Uh, it's a um, little bit more complex. Yeah. Giancarlo, question about that then. So like, um, so you can have either a trap that just sits there listening for incoming messages. And then you can also have a methodology where it's just continually polling the same uh, data point. And you know, if it's greater than or less than. Do you see a use or benefit of using one over the other in certain scenarios? Oh, absolutely. Have you seen so, yeah, absolutely. It, it, definitely the polling is usually the easiest one to configure, both from the SMP manager point of view, the monitoring solution, and from the agent. But in terms of resource usage on the network, it's not 
the, the, the let's say the most efficient one. The trap is definitely the most efficient where you just configure once that the agent will notify you if there is an issue. Now there is a concept here. Imagine that the agent disconnects or the SNMP agent doesn't work anymore for any reason. So software issue, network issue, whatever. Okay. If you just configure the trap and the agent disconnects, you will never receive the trap. So sure. in any case, you probably need to use both the methodology, you know, a polling with like, let's say high period or less frequency, uh, high minutes, whatever. And then the trap that will inform you as soon as something happens. After it goes very low on the UPS, you, you get the trap there. Perfect. Um, All right. Good in answer. terms of versioning, <laughs> thanks. Uh, uh, in terms of, uh, please interrupt me any time because I'm trying to, to, to flow through this slide, but I want to reach the, 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 sure. the demo soon. Right. But yeah, but please interrupt me because there are a lot of information around the SNMP that needs to be clarified. Okay. In terms of versioning, uh, there are uh, three version uh, so far of, uh, of SNMP. The first one, as I said, back in the 80s is version one. Lack of uh, uh, security, definitely. Lack of uh, um, encryption on the layer protocol, which has been tried to resolve with the version 2C, at least for the said security. So there was a, a version 2C adds a little bit of security to the, to the SNMP, but the ones that really adds security, encryption, and also the mechanism to, uh, to co check the integrity of the message is the version three. Now here it is the, the catch, not the issue. Version one was back in the 80s, version two C is probably uh, in the 90s or uh, late 80s. A lot of vendors, network vendors, they have adopted widely version two C but very few have adopted, started adopting version three. Even, the version, even if version three is I mean, the, the, the first uh, issue of the version three is in the early two, 2000. So it has been 20 years to adopt the version three, but we still see that a lot of vendors are still missing the support for version three. Uh, in terms of connectivity between the agent and the manager, version one and T is, is based, uh, one and two C is based on uh, what's called community strings. And there are strings for read only parameters, or strings for read and write. Click about read and write. I forgot to mention that the SNMP is also used for uh, not only for monitoring but also for acting on the uh, agent itself. So the manager can write SNMP um, information on the agent. Why this is important, we will see probably later. But for just to give an example, you can control the port status or the POE status of uh, an interface of a switch through the SNMP and other solution. So, and version one and two is based on these uh, read, read and read and write community string. Version two is, version three is more based on uh, credential. So there is a, a concept of usage, a user and password. The communication for user and password is encrypted and all the rest of the communication is also, you can configure encryption for the rest of the communication, it's up to you. Uh, and uh, there is file integrity as well. So string integrity. And finally, on version three, oh, everything, everything on the uh, this protocol is on UDP. So the default uh, is one six two port one six two on the UDP for the communication between manager and the agent. So the agent basically listen on port one six two uh, default for the uh, UDP port one six two. Uh, so we uh, this is jump in, in completely different subject here. Uh, we, when we talk about SNP, one important aspect of SNP is this dictionary called MIT, Management Information Base. What is this is basically uh, like a, a phone number book. You know, you, you make the sample, Martin, of phone number book. So when you interrogate an agent and you want to get an information about the temperature of the switch, as we were saying, mm -hmm. you need to know exactly an address. It's, it's a string of uh, numbers like an IP address, like an IP address, but it's a simple uh, of numbers. It tells you exactly, I want to get this information out of this device. Now, either you know that that ID, which is called uh, OED object, or, 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 yeah, OED object identifier, or use this uh, translator. You know, the MIB basically helps you in translating uh, this OED into something more readable, uh, yeah. but more importantly. The MIB is also a way for the vendor to structure, to, to create a structure around all these OED. Um, 
it basically perf it basically helps the um, manager, not the SNMP manager, to understand better how to read the information out of uh, the SNMP agent for that specific model. So this is probably better to see, I put here some example, but it's probably better to jump to some of the uh, MIB that we have here. So I have here yeah, one, a, a, sorry, just to say like one other um, kind of like um, analogy that I make sometimes as well, like with these OIDs and the MIBs and whatnot is very similar. And I think um, when you think of the registry of a Windows machine, Right, you install a new piece of software. You have no idea where it put that in the registry. But if you open up, you know, HKLM software, the words make it fairly easy for you to follow along and see where that particular registry key is, so you can see it. Whereas with a device, think of this almost somewhat like its own little registry. But instead of the words to guide you down the path, it's just the numbers. So the MIB is essentially putting the words to the numbers as well. Yeah, yeah, that's a very, very good analogy, Martin. I'll, I'll say, Martin, that, you know, I've looked at uh, many different MIBs from di many different manufacturers. It's not the easiest thing to read. Uh, they should, yeah. in some sense, they should have called it DNMP because it, a lot of it is fairly difficult, but... Difficult network management yeah. protocol. <laughs> I totally get what they're trying to do. You definitely need to understand, you know, how... SNMP fundamentally was built and what it was meant yeah. to do in order to be able to read um, a MIB. I, I do think, and Giancarlo, you're going to show some tools, whether it's, you know, people probably are very familiar with iReasoning. I think we're going to show that, but even some of the things we do at Domotes to try to extract that complexity and make it easy. So oh, yeah. uh, it's a challenge. Yeah, and, yeah and, I, and I use the registry just as a, um, to keep it familiar. Right, kind of like know your audience. We're all engineers. We know what the registry editor is. I yeah, <laughs> um, I'm oh, sure we it. all do. I'm sure we all do. So just by you know, a you know, it's a it's a good analogy, I think. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. The, the other analogy I usually do it's like uh, um, uh, if you have uh, an app for navigating a, a modern uh, navigator. No, mm. you. I mean. Basically, you can navigate with la latitude and longitude, but if you don't know the route to go to a specific uh, um, place, you are kind of lost, no? And that's the way, where the map get, gets in, no? It has a map, it loads a map layer, and then you navigate through the map layer and yep. not exactly to the latitude and longitude, which is, which is great. And I will show you why it's important, not the routing to the specific OID. Um, so speaking about the structure, so, it's, it's far from being simple. The structure of the MIB is uh, starts from the importing other MIB. So there are there are concepts of multiple layer where you start from, uh, and you can import uh, uh, previously defined uh, layer of uh, MIB. This is a MIB. Uh, okay, let me show you. This is a MIB. Same uh, snapshot from there. This is a MIB for the printer, uh, the uh, the printer MIB. Uh, as you see at the beginning, there is an import from other MIBs. The the MIB two, which is the default one is like the root and all the other MIPs there. There is the same for network device. If you go to the if MIP of, uh, uh, of switches, router, it also uh, start from the MIP2 as well, plus a bunch of other uh, of other MIPs that each start reads. And then if you scroll down, you will find all the definition of all the tables or the scalar that you can query inside um, an SMP for that agent, so the agent that supported that MIP. And when we, start, we speak about tables, we will see some example. It's, um, it's like uh, defining that on a specific uh, uh, address, there is uh, like a, a building no? a, with a lot of apartments. And then in that apartment, there might be 10 floor, 20 floor, you don't know. And then for every floor, there might be 10 rooms or 10 apartments. So that's how the tables work. Uh, the MIP doesn't tell you on this address, there is a building of 20, 20 floors. It just tells you there is a building. And then the implementation of the agent will tell you, okay, this, in this building there are 20 floors. And in every single floor there is 10, um, 10 rooms or 10 apartments. The other, you yeah. from Carlo. Um, I'm not sure if you want to address this or, or if you have a thought on this, but there's also this notion of public MIBs versus private MIBs. Um, is there any thoughts on that about how manufacturers deal with that or? That's a, that's a very uh, common thing. So 
in theory, the manufacturer should rely on the public to meet, uh, for stuffing their, their own meat. But they can implement their own version, their own meat, no, which is the private ones. So the, the public ones are the, uh, the if meat for interfaces, the printer meats, UPS one, we will, we'll have a bunch of meat. But then every single manufacturer, they can implement their own private one. And Martin, if you remember correctly, you had an example where there is a, an issue in this kind of hierarchy or inheritance of MIPS from one vendor to the other. Yeah, and, and it's just it's just something that I've experienced in my past where, um, oh man, this is several years ago, uh, we basically deployed a bunch of Olivetti printers um, in an environment. And when we were you know, doing SNMP polling on them, they were all coming back as Kyoceras. Or maybe it was either way around. <laughs> And, um, oh no, the printers were Olivetti. And I think it was a case that Olivetti had purchased Kaya Sierra's firmware. And because there aren't any standards in place for an Olivetti to really do anything with that, I mean, they should do that, you know, just uh, it's for their own benefit. But because there aren't any like industry standard or government regulations on this like topic, shall we say, um, you're going to find that from time to time, you'll see different vendors with like same void values and same MIBs and well, I wasn't expecting that device to report like this because it's not that kind of device. Well, that's just where the vendor says, okay, I'm going to purchase this firmware, uh, SNMP, this SNMP implementation, attach that to my firmware, off I go. I don't need to do anything with that because I don't need to. Well, I also think it's because I don't want to either. Um, but that's, you know, that can lead to a bit of confusion um, that's out there as well. But that's generally why that happens for the, for the most part. So, yeah, yeah, thanks. Thanks for that. You know, Giancarlo, one, one thing that you and I have dealt with, you know, from a, from a Domo's perspective with the way we implement this is when we've been looking at some of the managed switches that out there, right? There's a, there's a plethora of them, if I can use that term. Um, the nice thing is, is that most of them will follow the basic standard for all of the, the general network interfaces, right? Dealing with the um, number of ports, whether they're stacked or not, dealing with bandwidth through those ports right all that but what we see is that when it comes to the power side of managed switches managed switches that implement poe a lot of times there's these different um there's these different call it power supply um power supply Me, yeah yeah which is that that forced them to have these private mibs and it's been a little bit more difficult to deal with that so that's just another example where even a common thing like a managed switch will have not only public, but also private aspects to it. I agree, I completely agree, yeah. Yeah, one, one thing as well that I've noticed just for a couple of vendors is that, you know, with obviously the ever increasing adoption of APIs, well, a lot of the APIs need a good foundation to talk to and that foundation for a lot of these vendors is SNMP. <laughs> so a few vendors are actually, you know, improving their SNMP base and you know, making those changes that I said that they really weren't doing previously to facilitate their own APIs. So that, you know, is you know, APIs at the end of the day, they're talking to the device's firmware. Not all the time, but most of the time, that's leveraging SNMP style data to get those stats. Yeah. So. No, no, I agree, I agree. And we've seen that. Yeah, we have seen that with some vendors where where they were in, while improving the API, they also improve the SNMP for that. But on the other hand, there are other vendors. The, some of the vendors that are now migrating into the cloud, no, they have their own control system into the cloud, mm. which don't leverage the SNMP in that case, and they are trying, and they are kind of abandoning, let's say, um, putting away the SNMP support. Without throwing any names there, though, there are. Um, so in terms of continuing to speak about the SNMP, one of the concepts in this SNMP still about Think about get uh, sorry the 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 request and result kind of methodology. So when we do SNMP get, uh, one particular layer is the the concept of table. And as I was mentioning, the me just define the table itself doesn't describe the content. How many uh, are, how many let's say entities are in that table for that specific device? So there might be the same me for a switch of twenty four ports and same me for a switch of twenty four uh, forty eight ports. The content of the if meet for the um, let's say traffic on those ports is like 24 entities in one of the switch and 48 entities in the other. The, the table itself in the description doesn't give you that information. 
it's up to the, the SMP agent that provides that. And that's why it adds a little bit of complexity when you start monitoring, you know? Because when, when you monitor a print, when you monitor even a printer, when you monitor a printer and you create your own, uh, let's say, template, I want to monitor a printer with the ink level of two ink uh, cartridge, because that's the printer you defined your monitoring solution or template on. But then you, you move that template on a printer that has four cartridge, and then that template doesn't work anymore because there are more objects inside the same table of the cartridge. So that's why you need something or a monitoring solution that is more dynamic there. And we will show you about this in, uh, using the, uh, the Mi browser. I listen to Mi browser. So, um, hey, Giancarlo, is, yeah. I, I don't want you to necessarily focus on this at this point, but we did get a we did get a comment here, which I, which I think is important to to recognize. And and I probably brought it up by by adding some uh, confusion around public and private MIBs. But the question was really related to, you know, do these MIBs exist on the same device? Oh, yeah. And, I think, I think from my perspective, right, and I'm going to take it, I'm going to answer this question from a, a 30,000 foot level to say, it's really up to the manufacturer, whether they implement OIDs, right, object identifiers inside of a device. The MIB is really just providing the kind of, like you said, the phone book or the definition. And, and to Martin's point, it's really providing kind of a human readable language to those MIBs. Um, so if a device has an OID, right, an object identifier, a sensor within it, um, you're really leveraging the MIB, whether it's the public MIB or the private MIB, right, um, to to understand what that sensor is. Do you want to? Is there any other comment you can add? To yeah, that? You know, just the other comment. That, I mean, it doesn't mean that one device has only one MIB. One device has multiple MIB, and then yeah. they can have multiple public MIB together with multiple private MIB. Some of the MIB by, might be inherited by other MIPs, or some are just plain MIPs, like the if uh, or the, the if MIP, which inherited the MIP too anyway. But the if MIP is the starting point from other MIPs that can rely on that one. So in the, in the example that you give before, like switches, POE switches, they might have the public MIP for if MIP. And inside the same one, they can rely also on a private MIP for controlling the POE status of the port of the switch. Yeah. So absolutely. And, um... Another example to give as well is um, Synology devices. Uh, their basic SNMP implementation is just Linux, because that's just the operating system that runs on those, like a particular brand of OS. Um, and then they have one MIB for storage, one MIB for system, one MIB for disk, one MIB for RAID. I, I forget all of them, but they have like five or six of their own private MIBs, which you are obviously encouraged to, you know, if in your RMM tool of choice, uh, you can load those into that and use those when you're navigating this, you know, registry, shall we say, yeah. of the SNMP uh, implementation. But yeah. 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 Absolutely. Uh, just to move on, I mean, we discussed about the type of devices really a uh, lot at the beginning. You know, where where SNMP is really important on printers, NAS drive. You mentioned Synology, QNAPL, the NAS drive. They have their own implementation of SNMP which most probably is uh, based on Linux. Um, servers, even though, I mean, we can, in some cases you can avoid because you can have your own RMM agent on the servers, but routers, which is access point, that's very important. UPS is very important. Um, environment sensors is also important. A lot of uh, environment sensors, like temperature, humidity, they report the status of the sensor itself through the SMP. We'll probably see some examples uh, later projectors, and many, many more other, let's say, even IoT devices in, in there. Uh, here here in, the, in the presentation, uh, a few examples of tools that can be used to navigate through the MIBs and navigate through the, S, uh, the SNMP of an agent. Um, I will show you uh, how we use uh, iReasoning, the MIB browser, but I will also show, show you, of course, how, how we use in uh, There are multiple, multiple tools that can be used as a manager of SNMP. So let's talk about uh, any challenges. We discussed a lot about OID and MIBs as a challenge. Now you need to map every, every single OID to something that is this, something that is human uh, can be read from the human. No, uh, we discussed also the, about the MIB standardization, and there is that there, the concept that there is no basically no industry governance there, no? and create some issue 
some uh, very good example brought by Martin. Uh, the MIB inheritance will show how the import of other MIBs can also create some confusion there. Um, another challenge, it's more on the, on the let's say, methodology to get data out of the uh, SMP agent is the SMP trap. It's, it's per se, it's not a challenge. It's, it's more a challenge for the monitoring solution to manage SMP traps properly, rather than a challenge in the, in the concept of SMP. Trap is super powerful. Just to bring the traps working in the monitoring solution, that's the challenge from my point of view. Uh, you know, the challenge is multiple versioning of uh, SMP, and we discuss how the versioning had been supported by the vendors, and the security of every single version. Now, the most secure is the version three, but the issue is that it's not, it, it's not going to cover all your stack of technology or your stack of vendors. And the last challenge, we also discuss about that, is the discoverable of available MIPS on a specific device. So you bring a new device on the network, you know that it supports SNMP, but you don't know which MIPS it supports. So you need a, a way to identify which MIP they support, how to discover automatically, how to start reading from that one. And also, as we, we discussed before, imagine you have a MIP with a, a variable table, like a, a number of ports on a switch. You need to create a solution that is uh, flexible in the way that if you bring that switch on the line, you apply a generic template with no matter how many ports you have, it reads every single port entity there. But the switch is like a static, uh, concept, no, it's static hardware. You, you don't have a switch that is 24 ports and the next day it's 26 ports. So once you create the, yeah. the, the template for that switch, it should be fine. A good example is the, the NAS drive or the rack of uh, no, uh, volumes. Yeah, I've, I've, so I've had this conversation multiple times um, in different capacities as, you know, as a vendor and also a partner where, you know, it's like, you know, I've created these monitors for 16 ports, but wait a moment. I don't know if that switch is always going to have 16 ports. It could have eight or it could have 24. So now I've got eight monitors that are throwing errors because the ports don't exist, or I don't have these eight monitors on these extra eight ports that the device does have. So trying to find a scalable solution for that, you know, regardless of tool, you know, can, can for some vendors, you know, definitely be a challenge. Yeah, absolutely. It is, it is. But the other example is uh, even if you define a static for the same device, and the static might be dynamic because the, the example of the NAS drive with multiple um, mounted disks, you might have one day you have just two mounted disks and then the next day you mount other two disks. So if you start oh, mounting the, just the, the first two. So like the base and the drives. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, got it. So even if you start monitoring with a good template for that NAS, I mean, that, the next day you might change that. So even in that case, you need to have something very, very dynamic there. Anyway, that, that's the, I, I, in my opinion, that's the biggest challenge. Okay, this is just a placeholder because I, I would like to switch to the demo. Um, yeah, Giancarlo, sorry to interrupt you. That's actually one of my notes, do not interrupt. But just to- <laughs> just to... Drop an F-bomb, drop an F-bomb, Martin. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, just to let you know, just a quick time check here. Uh, we're at 12.35. Not rushing you, just letting you know the time. Oh, thanks, no, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let me jump to the, to the, definitely to the demo. Okay. So, uh, one thing I want to show you is the eye reasoning and the mid browser. Um, so I'm going to use one printer here. So this is the IP address of the printer. And this is the, basically these are the MIPS that I have loaded or actually they come by default in the eye reasoning MIP browser. The basic MIP is MIP2 out of that, the inheritance of all the other uh, MIPS like in the system, which is the basic one and the interfaces, which is, it goes to the if me as well, and then it goes to the printer, which is the, in my case, this is the printer. But let's see how it works. So I, I can search for sys description, for instance. I know that the sys description uh, gives me, oh, I have it here already. It gives me the information about that specific uh, device. Consider that the system, the MIB system uh, applies to every single device. So I get this ID, this is the address, as we were mentioned before, and I have multiple operators that I can use. The, the default one is the get or the get nest, which just jump to the next OID in the, in the definition. Uh, the get bulk, which was introduced in, only in the version two, and then get sub tree, which basically on the table creates the entire structure. I will show you that. Then work, which we basically, okay. So, sorry, 
I've gone against that. Do not interrupt again. I just one thing that I do one thing that I do want to point out here is you know obviously SNMP as we've kind of established by now it's not the S is not for standard. <laughs> it's simple, although it's not yeah. so simple. <laughs> the system description, the object ID, and like just like those seven that you see there, uh, like description ID, time, contact name, location, services. Every single device has those. Every device. Um, because they are in the public MIB space, going back to the public private earlier on, those are public and every device, at least, and especially going back to the whole vendor, right, with Olivetti and Kyocera back in the day, I'm sure they've ironed things out now. Um, no matter what the device does or no matter what the vendor does, um, they will always change at least these seven. Um, so if you could go to, um, if you could just, just do like a get subtree, that should walk the seven of those. Um, just one thing that I would like to point out as well. Yeah. Okay. So cool. you actually, you can stop that. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the object ID, this is the big one um, that can help detect the devices. So if you look at that, you've got 136141. And the next number is 11. 11 is, the, is that vendor's IANA number. I completely forgot what that stands for. I apologize, but it's the IANA number. And every vendor, when they purchase firmware, they get allocated a number. Um, okay, there is no industry governance per se, mm. but there is at least, you know, to a degree, you know, it's just best effort. You know, yes, you, you are entitled to a number. It's in your best interest to make your SNMP implementation easy for your users, but they will all get issued an ID number. That ID number is placed in where this one says 11. And if you was to Google um, IANA enterprise numbers, you'll see a plain text web page full of them all. So that will help you with your device hey, detections. Hey Martin, I, I got to give Gavin credit, man. Internet assigned numbers authority. Right? Uh, there we go. See? I knew I knew the you end was numbers. You can rely <laughs> on the SP Geek community to solve any problem. See, now is that is that Gavin Stone number one or Gavin Stone number two? Because we do have two of them. <laughs> That I can't tell you. You didn't put a number after it. So. Uh, okay. <laughs> anyway, go, go ahead, Giancarlo, and I will, I will not interrupt no, that's again. Fine. I apologize. That's fine. So I just want to show, I mean, how to get, I mean, the, 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 you talk about the, the subtree, which get, gives, especially on the table, it gives yeah, just the table of the subtree, and the uh, work which will go OED after OED uh, yeah. through the entire table. Uh, Set is the common used to set specific value, which mm -hmm. we'll discuss. Uh, we mentioned PoE port status. Let me give you an example of a table. Uh, so this is a printer, definitely. Uh, it's an HP printer. Uh, what I want to show you is this table of the marker, uh, actually the marker supplier uh, supplies, which basically inform, can be used to retrieve information like the level of ink on every single uh, package. So if I do a subtree here, which it will basically scan the entire subtree of the supplies and for every single, which is called uh, EF, EF in, um, index here, it will get the information about uh, every single cartridge. So there are four index here for cartridge and for every single cartridge, there is the, the maximum capacity for it, most important one, maximum capacity and the supply level as, uh, as it is right now. So this information down below here can be used, for instance, to monitor how le much level is still residual in the, in the uh, cartridge. Same can be used on, on, a, on an UF, UPS, for instance. Now, we were talking about templating, no? We were talking about the way, okay, I can monitor this cartridge here, but I want to create a sort of template. I want to discuss about what we are creating in Nomads uh, because part of this project will be open source and will be available to the community, still work in progress. Uh, but what we are creating is basically a way of defining templating of SMP uh, in a JSON format so that you can discover this kind of stuff through uh, scripting Python languages or, or scripting like that. Let me show you what we are creating here. Um, I have probably an example of the templating for the UPS, but we can show the same. So this is a, an example of templating on the output for every single um, entity of an UPS. And I will probably throw through the UPS itself. Um, it will basically return for every single entity of the output, voltage, power, percentage load, current, currently. 
Let me show you this now. So I have a, a new PS and I want to run this script. Okay. Um, Just don't turn yeah. off my power here at the office. Oh, oh I'll try that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, and don't connect to the VPN that I did you out for 20 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I did already. Still uh, so we need your yeah. screen. <laughs> But let me move to this one. This is a, okay, I will show you this definition. It's just definition for my script to say, okay, interrogate this uh, UPS here uh, using this of overlay or a definition of the JSON that I was showing you. And then when I run it, the script, it will basically start with this definition, the same definition here. And now it's interrogating the UPS itself. What basically does is exactly this. So we have, 43 dot, uh, I don't remember the IP address there. I put it right here. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm spoiling some of the information here, but UPS was running on the 143. 43, and it's using the yes, thing. You know, okay, while, while you're, you're sorting yep. through, one, th one thing I want to point out, right, and this is again coming from a, from a product guy who really cares about how can our customers leverage this technology. You know, I want to I point out, and we've said this before, S, while it doesn't mean standard and it means simple, it's, it's hardly simple. You know, some of the stuff you're showing, and I think I would use the word demystified for this. Um, what we're trying to do here is really show a lot of the power of, of SNMP and its capabilities. I think the example you gave around like the ink, right? You can see, you know, what the current level is, but you can also see the total capacity. I, I think how you leverage that information is really what you as a service provider, right? Or an integrator who, who is trying to look at this and, and put it together. It's really a matter of how do I take this data, gather it, and then report on it? How do I yeah. then use it to help my customers, right? The, the end users of that equipment to be better off. And I think this is part of, of what we're trying to show. I also want to say that there are tools out there, whether you use iReasoning or you leverage something like Domotes, Avic, uh, Zabbix, right? Any of these tools that are out there to uh, really take advantage of um, of this information in a useful way. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. agree. Yeah, that's. Uh, I would show you how we leverage in Domots as well, uh, but I want to show you what's. I mean, this script here just leverage the SMP war command. Uh, the net uh, we we talk we we showed not the I reasoning but the net SMP. But absolutely, every single uh, tool has its own implementation and way of reporting stuff. Uh, so with this tool, I mean, apart from some errors, still troubleshooting, there is all the levels on the input. There are some generic information about the bypass. There is some information about the UPS button, which is very important for UPS. Now, temperature, but also the residual uh, level of, of the battery here. And we do exactly the same in Domots, I will show you. But the, what I want to do focus here is was this kind of table. No? So regardless of number of output or banks that you have in the UPS, this kind of script automatically scale. So if you have an UPS with two banks only, it will only show two columns, let's say. If you have three banks, it will show three columns and so on. Um, I wanted to jump now with the same implementation in Domots as well, uh, but just to see how basically similar to iReasoning, we allow to discover the MIBs in Domots as well. Uh, so if for the UPS, UPS. So there was this UPS, this uh, UPS we were looking before. Um, what we have in SNMP is a bunch of, let's say, OD that we start monitoring. This is polling. So this is a request result, mm -hmm. of course. We're not doing yet the trapping, which is very important. As we, we were mentioning, it's a, it's a challenge. We want to add that one, but this is polling. So we're polling the, the battery status level. We're polling the temperature, the low battery time and the charge remaining, which is important. And then what is in, what it is very important for a monitoring solution is that you set alerts. So one important alert for UPS, for instance, is when the battery level goes below a certain threshold. That's what monitoring solutions should allow to. 
or even to see the history of the uh, every single entity. No? You can see the temperature, of course, the battery level will be always like 100 in that case. But very importantly, when you add, uh, we were discussing about the bands there, I want to show how the, the UPS battery table works. So if you go to the UPS, um, Output. Oops, if I spell correctly, yes. And I, I look at the uh, UPS uh, output table. In this case, it will automatically retry all the uh, uh, value that I can have on the power, on the voltage, and so on. So the three, uh, in this case, it's three banks. I can have four, I can have five, and then I can have all of them. I can have just one, or, and so on. Still, it's not dynamic. If, for instance, in the, in the example of the NAS, if I have the second day, I have a new drive, it will not, I still need to manually entry that one. No. That's why it's still a challenge. Now, why I discuss about that is because I want to bring to the next step. And this is really the closure of the presentation. We were already uh, by far uh, longer. Uh, this is like a snapshot of what we are building or allowing the, uh, the Domus user to build in terms of automating the discovery of new MIBs, in terms of automating the attaching uh, templates to a specific device. So it basically starts from uh, the discovery device. So you attach a new device on the network. That device will trigger something in Domus. And what it something is, uh, it will try to discover automatically if the device itself supports any kind of MIB. If it supports a MIB, for which you have already a supported template, well, this script, it's a, it's a node red flow. It's not Domots, it's a node red flow. We basically retrieve all the sensors that are a part of that uh, um, same template and attach every single sensor there. Now, the next step of this automation, as I was mentioning, if you imagine you have a table which is, can be dynamic, like NAS drives, with, with this same example, you can. Uh, you can now look if this table change and attach new sensor as soon as they change. So this is a work in progress. We are going to demo uh, this, uh, this activity probably in a month or so, uh, end of April, I, I believe. Um, and the idea is that once we demoing, we will bring this kind of information inside DOM. So it will be automatically built inside DOM, this kind of mechanism. Yeah, that's really cool. It's good. You know, I, you know, Martin it likes to bring up the, the fact of our time. <laughs> this is exactly where I was oh going. Go far, though, right? <laughs> it was one time check, guys. It was just 30 <laughs> minutes. It was out of being polite. I, and I also said no rush. <laughs> I was like speeding up my voice. <laughs> yeah, no, this is this is really good. This is really good. You know, one of the one of the the questions that came in, Giancarlo, that that I you know, and I've addressed a couple of things by typing stuff out, but I think this one's an important one because it has to do with IPv6. Uh, mm -hmm. And the question specifically was, um, is there a way? Or, or do, does SNMP allow for monitoring a bandwidth on IPv6 and, and what tools can be implemented? I mean, speak, speak to IPv4, IPv6 and, and SNMP in general. So we didn't show the, the, how monitoring uh, SNMP on, on switches where you, you can really monitor the traffic on every single port of the switch. The, I, if me is well implemented by not only the switches, but even uh, um, even the UPS has its own uh, if me table. And in the UPS itself, you can monitor the traffic at the UPS port. Still, this is on top of the uh, of uh, IPv4, but it's going to be working on IPv6 as well. Also to mention, Domus doesn't, doesn't do that yet, uh, but, but a bunch of uh, other SNMP um, manager, let's say, they, they do that. So, perfect, perfect. Yeah. We did get we did get a question actually regarding Domotes and yeah, SNMP. Um, yeah, and I, I think it's worthwhile. I mean, I know you showed um, that that screen. I think it's worthwhile, Giancarlo, to bring it up real quickly because one of the things I mentioned early on is that there are several tools out there that try to simplify, right? Try to put the S back in SNMP. Um, can you show Can you show how it, easy it is to search across? an OID or for an OID in a particular device? Because I yeah. think a lot of tools try to try to make this easier. And it was one of the questions that we did get. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, this was an example in DOMOTS, but we have the same example in uh, iReasoning, you know, where we know that this device is an UPS. We know that we as DOMOTS, you know, we know that uh, this device supports so some kind of MIPS. We load those MIPS. These MIPS are stored in our cloud. And then one, when we, we search for the specific MIP, we just search inside the definition of that MIP. So if I want to search for temperature, I want to look at the temperature of the UPS. I have the UPS battery temperature level. Okay, I, I did already add that one actually, and it's here basically. So, and I reasoning works exactly the same. So if I have here, and this is UPS, and I search for temperature, it will basically pop up this one. And if I get that one, I get 23 degrees for that. So it's exactly the same. Perfect. Now for the for the switches, it's a little bit more complex. Now you have the traffic on the if MIP, and this is the script I was showing you, where for every single port dynamically gets all the index of the ports and then the traffic. So this is this is the input. No, this is the output to send, and uh, there will be errors. There will be packet loss or packet discarded, and this is the received one. And so basically, using this information, these are octets. The monitoring tool can create like a graph of the traffic, and we do, for instance, here in uh, in, in Domots, this is a Cisco switch, and we have for every single interface we have the traffic of that switch itself. So this is a security camera, and you can monitor the traffic here. So input output errors is discarded, and a bunch of other information. You mentioned the power. Power is not most of the cases not on the standard MIB or the public MIBs is very likely on the private in most of the cases. Yep. You can show the power, but you can also control. And this button here is basically, I'm going to shut down your camera. <laughs> this button here is basically sending a command on SNMP. It's a set on a that specific SNMP uh, OID to switch off the power for that, that switch uh, port. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Giancarlo, we got a we, we got another question actually regarding managed switches. One one around uh, Cisco in particular and configurations. And I, I want to make a comment. You touched on one thing at the very beginning, which is you know V1, V2, V3, right? These versions of of uh, SNMP that are out there. A lot of that has to do with the types of credentials, right? That come across, yeah. right? Whether they're public, private, community strings, read, read, write. Um, or they use authentication in the case of V3. Yep. Um, the question here was, is there a specific configuration on the Cisco switches to get what I believe is SNMP to fundamentally work? And I wanna, I wanna, that's the question. So you think about that, but I wanna add to a comment that Martin gave earlier, which is, you know, a lot of these devices that we're dealing with have SNMP. It, we at Domotes, really take advantage of classification of all the devices that are on the network, the interrogation of all the devices. And it's important to note that not all devices, especially consumer devices, they don't take advantage of SNMP and they're not necessarily going to open up port 161 or 162 for the for traps and stuff. Um, so configuration of the devices or how the manufacturer configured it or allows it to be configured is important. So I wanted to mention that. What's your thoughts on that, Giancarlo? No, I completely agree. Now, there, there was a security issue on the version one, version two, as I mentioned. And uh, one concept is the following. And this is a, a recommendation from most of the vendors. If you're not going to leverage SNMP, don't enable SNMP no, on, the, on the device. And that's why on, on Cisco, for instance, as a good example, by default, most of the Cisco lines or switches, they have SNMP disabled by default. And when you enable, you also enable specifying, okay, which is my manager. So in the SNMP configuration of Cisco, and this is not generic. I mean, some of the switch, they have a completely different configuration, but in Cisco, once you enable, you also need to specify which is the IP address of the manager, the SNMP manager. So which is the, the one IP address that is allowed to read information out of uh, as the Cisco switch, which are the community string in the case of version one or version two, uh, and, or, or authentication in case of version three. And in case of version three, there is also a layer of encryption as well that you can specify. And this is uh, showing how it works on uh, on iReasoning, the same is exactly normal. So once you enable SNMP in the Cisco switch, you need to make sure that it, it match the same in Domots or in iReasoning. And you can uh, 
if it is a version two, you just specify the community string for read and write. If it's a version three, you specify username, password, and then you specify the type of uh, encryption that you want to use depending on the authentication type that you have used there. And, and we just got a, we got a chat message to the panelists. And I think it's important to bring this up. You know, you're talking about V2, V3 and, and the vulnerabilities. The question really was, shouldn't V3 be used? And <laughs> yeah. my response to that is absolutely. Absolutely. I, I absolutely use it. Now, the only reason I would, I would say why you shouldn't use it is sometimes there are devices on the network that may not actually implement version three. Um, for whatever reason, right? It's probably a legacy device. Maybe it just doesn't have any control and it's more about status. Um, but anytime you can make your network more secure, you should do it. Yeah, but even with the stuff- 100%. I agree, I agree, yeah. I agree completely. And well, don't, don't get me wrong, TP, even if you just read information, it's still a vulnerability issue because you, you can have a, a deny uh, a, a DDoS using SNP just for reading. Which is huge. I mean, it's uh, so even if you just support it to be used for for reading information, you still need to properly consider the uh, the V three and not V two. But as you said, I mean, the legacy yeah. devices are there. Yeah. Good, 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 good. Um, there was another there was another chat comment that came to us as a panelist. It wasn't in the actual Q and A panel, um, but it says, "Is there any chance for built in?" SNMP slash MIBs, right, for partner devices, like, and, and the you know, examples they gave were Meraki and Unify. Um, though, in particular, I think what they're looking for is some of the, the WAPs, right, the wireless access points. And, and I find, Giancarlo, you and I have had this discussion and, and how Domotes implements um, kind of the interrogation of the WAPs is a little different than what happens on managed switches. And I think it has to do with the way SNMP is not implemented is, is exactly that yeah it is accurate and when i mentioned that there are some companies that are bringing they're bringing more information on the cloud rather than on snp ubiquity is one of them i mean ubiquity even on the legacy switches they are like uh, putting away the snp they're bringing more and more information on the unify cloud controller rather yep. than on snp the access point itself they usually don't support i mean most of them they usually don't even support the snp and meraki is probably the same yeah. 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 I've seen a lot of vendors doing that recently, just going to more of a, um, I guess I'll loosely term it like a closed system. It's like, I if was you want to use the same word closed. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Good. Yeah. 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 So it's like, Hey, if you want to manage these devices, you absolutely can. You yeah. have to use, you know, we, we are putting all of our dedicated resources and whatnot into our own tools. So if you want to use our devices, you can manage them through our tools and they build and they implement their SNMP and API and whatnot, specifically for for their management tools, yeah. um, primarily. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, well, Martin, yeah, we're we're at our time. Um, yeah. I want to be sensitive to everybody there. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was just going to say we're uh, right on the hour here. So, um, are there any other questions or whatnot? Anybody wants to throw into the chat or, like I say, we got. JB looking at the chat here, Violet looking at the chat in Slack. Um, but yeah, want to be respectful of everybody's time. Uh, we are at the hour. So let me uh, have a quick glance through. Yeah, uh, seeing a couple things around SNMP v3, right, in particular, but. Uh... No, so just to clarify, uh, I, I saw a message uh, uh, speaking about Unify and Meraki supporting SNMP v3. They definitely do. They definitely do. But the kind of information they bring to SNMP v3 is not the same that you can find on their API. That's yeah. the kind of thing that I want to mention. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, yeah, so I guess we'll uh, kind of call it a wrap once again. Uh, my name is Martin Kier. Um, joined today uh, by Domotes. We had uh, Giancarlo dropping a ton of knowledge on SNMP, JB up there in his orange shirt, keeping it classy with a Domotes <laughs> mug. Hey, where's my Domotes mug, man? Hey, yeah, look at that. Yeah, <laughs> if you guys want a Domotes mug, reach out. JB at <laughs> right on. Well, yeah, seriously, uh, Giancarlo, JB, uh, thank you very much for, you know, being willing to do this uh, for us today. Um, as for us here at MSP Geek, uh, you know, we thank you for joining us today on uh, this GeekCast. This is our third month. Uh, we're going to keep these coming, you know, on a monthly basis. Um, so watch out for some news uh, regarding April's uh, 
well, on April the 1st. That's ironic. But anyway, mm. um, <laughs> but yeah, um, thank you for your time. And everybody, enjoy the rest of your day, afternoon, evening, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Thanks See you later, guys. Bye. <laughs>